Hello everybody, this is Fronies Bobbin here, and welcome back to Train Simulator 2, where today we'll be taking a look at the newly released <coughs> Spring uh, Springfield Industrial. Yes, I have some gas to extract. Uh, but yeah, tra uh, new route here in Train Simulator 2, the Springfield Industrial. Yeah, even though Train Simulator 2 is a thing now, they're still releasing new content for Train... Oh wait... I got that backwards. So even though that Train Simulator 3 is a thing now, they're still releasing new content for Train Simulator 2. Why? I have no idea. But that's but that doesn't matter, I guess, is we are here looking at a new route. A very interesting one, I gotta say. Another American route. Uh, not as much content as the last one we checked out, the uh, California Sunrise, but still some stuff in here that is rather interesting. So, let's take a look at all the content that you get here in the Train Simulator 2 Springfield Industrial Route. But before we do that, be sure to check out my Fiverr gig. Link is in the description. Alright, so first up we have the big one. The Metro North Bombardier M7. Yes, sir. A train that has existed in trains lore for a long time now has finally made it to the mobile version. Oh, yes. We have a modern day electric multiple unit here in Train Simulator 2 now. Well, I say modern day. Okay, it's not the most modern thing in the world, having been built about 20 years ago or 15 years ago or something. Some point in the late 2000s, but still much more modern than what the usual stuff is that we get here in Train Simulator 2. Uh, which is a bit, which is funny, because just last week we looked at a modern day electric multiple unit over in Train Simulator 3, and now we've got one here in Trains 2. Uh, this one, of course, isn't as modern, like I said, but yeah, still modern. Uh, anyway, Bombardier M7 in the Metro North Liberty. Now, this model here does actually date back quite a ways. I believe it made its debut over in the Train Simulator, uh, no, Train Simulator 2009 on the PC version. Um, yeah, Train Simulator 2009 as part of the, uh, the Harlem Line route. Um, so yeah, here it is in Trains 2. It looks, okay, the model itself is pretty outdated, although it is a very old model. In fact, this, this model is actually almost as old as this train in real life. Um, so yeah. Uh, so we have the M7A, and here's the M7B unit, which I think is pretty much the same. Although there might be some minor detail changes here and there, but whatever. But here it is, the M7 is now in Train Simulator 2. Yeah, one of the few trains here in Train Simulator 2 that I've actually seen and been on in real life. I actually rode on this thing uh, not too long ago on my trip to New York, which I believe that video should be out by now. Anyways, uh, front cab is actually pretty well detailed. So, yeah, for the time, it's not that bad. Uh, let's take a look at the cab then. Yeah, the cab is pretty all right. Um, yeah, M7 cab. Okay, some of the texture isn't that great. Uh, yeah, this model is definitely not the best. I think even for its time, this model is not great in some regards. But yeah, there you go. And of course, it's the horn. Yeah, it doesn't quite sound like the horn does in real life. But I guess it's still decent. And. Yeah. And this train does have a bell, even though the real-life M7 does not have a bell. Uh, but there you have it, the M7. Is this the, uh, is this the same? Yeah, okay, same thing. Alright. But there it is, the Bombardier M7 here in Train Simulator 2. So, but this is kind of the only locomotive that makes sense, because here we have this, a Union Pacific locomotive. Why is there a Union Pacific locomotive in the same add-on as a M7? Yeah, we've got two trains from two very different parts of the United States here in the same route. I have no idea why, but... Yeah, here it is, the Union Pacific SD40-2 locomotive. Uh, which is actually from about the same era, I think, as trains, uh, you know, trains 2009. As this model is, has some upgrades to make it look nicer. Not this one, this one. Uh, this model, this one actually has pretty good modeling, actually. It's almost up to the standard as, uh, uh, of the, uh, stuff on the E2 engine, you know, Train Simulator 3 and all that stuff. So, yeah, this is actually a pretty nice model, all things considered. Yeah, you Pacific SC4-2. Interior! Okay, interior is about, you know, what do you expect for the era, but it's still alright. Yes, indeed it is. Nice. All right, and horn. And it's the good old classic horn and bell sound. Nice. 
Up next, we have a couple of freight cars. Uh, this is the CHNC64K, this thing, uh, which I believe is like a uh, gondola car that can carry containers. I'm not too sure actually about this one. We'll probably see it when we're on the track style, but yeah, this wagon, very interesting looking. Nice model, actually. I will say, nice details. I like it. Yeah. And behind it here, we have this, the Brilliant Northern Grain Hopper, which also, why is this in this add-on? This doesn't even make any sense. If I could think this doesn't even make any sense from a historical perspective, because I think Burlington Northern uh, was already, became part of, you know, BNSF uh, once the Metro M7 was built. So, I don't know why this is here, but uh, yeah, here it is. The, I can't tap in the right place here, is the Burlington Northern Hopper car for some reason. Uh, not a new asset here in Train Simulator 2. Um, I believe this one's actually dates all the way back to the uh, Mariah's Pass, which even that came out back in 2016 for this game. So, yeah, there you go. Now, I should say, so all the stuff here in on these two tracks, this stuff is, I know is included in this route. Now, then there's some other stuff, though, which I found in the game today, but I don't know if it's actually, like, usable in this route, so I don't know. Uh, but here it is, the Canadian National C4-2. Now, this one, you can't drive this one in a, uh, in a scenario. This one's only, like, for AI stock. And actually, you know what's funny? Both of these locomotives here are both SD4-2s. So you can actually compare, like, the era. So we have this one, which I believe is from, like, you know, Train 2009. And we have this one, which probably is from, like, Train 2006 or 2004 or something. Because as you can see, this one looks a bit worse, um, in terms of its detailing. Yeah. And also, I don't think that this looks was even a new one here in Train Simulator 2. I think this one even dates all the way back to 2014, soon after this game came out. No bell on this one. Okay, but the horn, yeah. And of course, cab interior. Oh, it's the default. Uh, okay, default cab from the Santa Fe engine in this game. Couple of wagons. Uh, we have this, the BNSF flat car. Yes. Numbers I can say that then it's definitely a flat car, all right. <laughs> I'm not sure if this has been in other add-ons or at least other add-ons we'll take out over in Train Simulator 3, but here it is in Trains 2. And finally, the BNSF Alumina Hopper car, which even has a shadow underneath it to make it look more realistic. That's actually pretty cool. I love how, uh, so I love how despite these two being the same asset, this one gets a shadow underneath, but the Burlington other one doesn't for some reason. Otherwise, the mallness one is still right, I guess. And that's all the trains and rolling stuff you get. So I'll zoom out, take a look at the road stuff, and it's not very big. Yeah, this is it. This is the entire route. Not a big one this time. Uh, you get a big yard, station, main line, airport, and that's it. Very small route. Oh, this considered you got that money. And by the way, this add-on is four dollars. Four dollars if you want this add-on. And it doesn't really include all that much stuff, all things considered. Well, let's see if the raw stuff can impress me a little bit. So, yeah, now let's take a look at all the trains and rolling stock and the raw stuff. Let's look at these scenarios and then do some driving. All right, so here is all these scenarios here in the Springfield Industrial Route. First up, you have Airport Service, which is the one that we'll be doing today, where we'll be driving the, uh, the M7. Uh... Well, this is a round trip from Junction to the airport and back. Okay, so it takes a bit longer. Uh, next, we have flat cars, which use the New Pacific engine. Um, yeah, get just stuff for flat cars, I guess. Freight delivery, which, again, uses the New Pacific locomotive, but this time with some default box cars in Pennsylvania. Nothing makes sense at this point. And night service, which is pretty much the M7 passenger service, but in nighttime. Uh, but for today, we're doing the airport service. So, yeah, we drive a passenger train from the junction station to the local airport via Heights and then back the other direction. So, I'm guessing we're doing a round trip, which makes sense considering how short this route is. So, let's do this. Alright, here we are. Please bring the passengers to the local airport and back. There's some simple section. Check just for the schedule. Okay. I'll set a load of the section for a second time. On the first one, I actually did a ding dong noise, but didn't do it again for some reason. Oh, well, maybe do it again. Okay, guys, we're ready to go. Train is in cab with any caption to display. Oh, they're explaining the, uh, the signal system, but eh, we don't care about that. Well, here we are then. Oh, this train takes off really fast. Fast. 
I can't speak really fast. Like the uh, Odaiku 4000 train. Which is not realistic. Okay, actually, it is kind of realistic for this train. Is this train can accelerate quite fast, but not that fast. Here we are then in the M7. Yeah. Brand new train. The Train Simulator 2. We're going on this line. Alrighty then, the Springfield Industrial. Let's see what the thriving experience this one has to offer. But yeah, the M7, I'm actually quite happy that this train is here in Train Simulator 2 because I'm actually quite a fan of the M7. I do, yeah, I do have a liking to it with it being like a modern commuter train. Oh, I have something already. Oh, come on. Also, one thing you may have noticed about this one, you also get a uh, third rail. So if you want to, if you're not happy with this route, you can still get this route and then make your own uh, Metro North route. Maybe recreate one of the ones that exist in real life. You know, maybe like the Hudson Line or the Harlem Line or something. Could do that. I'll check this to nowhere. But I have to say, the geography of this route doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And I'll tell you why. So, for those of you who may be unfamiliar, so the so this look this train here, the Metro M7, only runs in the Northeast. Okay, especially I mean especially this one in the Metro Railroad livery. It only runs in the North, specifically in New York. Okay, this train is really sensitive braking accelerates. So I'm gonna have to actually I don't have to be that careful with this. I can just accelerate and then brake and then yeah. Also, here we are at Heights Station. Also, I think this model uh, is actually ported from one of the stations on the, uh, the Harlem Line route back in the uh, Trains PC version. Oh, there we go. We got the ding ding that time and the doors open. That's cool, at least. Yeah. Oh, uh, but yeah, this train runs in the Northeast. Okay, fair enough. But then you also include a Union Pacific locomotive. Which that primarily runs in the west. So. Oh, you're truly get 30. Uh, I don't care. Wait, did I actually lose points for arriving early? Nah. Stuff that. I'm not gonna drive to the schedule. I mean, this isn't even like a proper train simulator or, any, or anything, so the schedule is just kind of irrelevant. Now, this was something like Train Sim World or. Yes, I just mentioned Trains in World, or Trains in Classic, or just a more realistic simulator. Okay, if this were a sim rail, then I would do more to actually keep up with the schedule. But because this is trains, I don't care. But yeah, M7, which runs in the Northeast, uh, runs on a couple routes outside of New York, or also runs on the Long Island Railroad as well, though it's in a different livery. Um, but then it's been paired up with the Union Pacific SC4-2, which only runs on the West Coast. Of the United States, which is very far away. Like I say, West Coast of the United States also does run to some, I think, some routes over to the Midwest, but it doesn't really go any further than that. Like you're, like you're probably never gonna see a Union Pacific look over the Northeast. Actually, um, <laughs> you, are you guys uh, familiar with that uh, with that meme of the uh, of the polar bear in uh, Arlington, Texas? That's basically what 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 it would be in real life if a uh, if the Union Pacific SD4-2, or any Union Pacific local of action, not just the SD4-2, if any Union Pacific local was in the Northeast, it's basically the equivalent of seeing a polar bear in Arlington, Texas. You just don't see that. And yet here, here they are, but including the same route. Well, anyway, here we are already reaching the end of the line. Yeah, we're here at the airport. Yes. Oops, I gotta slow it down because it's been this dropping. But look at that. This train is so sensitive that I can just, yeah. And here we are at the airport. And yeah, believe it or not, that is the whole route. That's it. You can complete the route in less than five minutes, or ten, or something. A very short amount of time. Hey, there's a plane coming to land. Though. That's pretty cool. All right, well, here we are at the airport station. The end of the line. That's it. That's all you get. Yeah, it's. Yeah, this route is just way too short. I mean, come on. I didn't even put that much effort into it. Alright, change to the cab. And then drive back. Alright. So let's do... 
reverse train facing. And I guess now we'll drive from this end to the other end of the line. Uh, okay, but one thing I will say though, one positive thing I will say. This train does have door opening functionality. Uh, which is a bit of a... It's not really that common in, in trains here in trains. So it's nice that we have another train with doors that open when you stop by the station. Also, uh, I may have mentioned earlier that, yeah, this is a train that I've actually seen and I've been on in real life. And uh, as I mentioned uh, about a month ago, actually, in the uh, California Center video, video, I went to New York. Oh, there's a jet taking off. Look at that. Hang on, let's do a bit of plane spotting. If there's any. Oh, hang on, this, uh, this guy's about to take off. Look at that. Yes, we got planes. Look at that. Anyway, um, as I was saying, yeah, um, so back in the California Sunrise video, I said that I've been to New York. Um, well, hopefully, as of when this video is published, the, uh, California, uh, this video, the Springfield route, um, that video should already be out by now. So yeah, if you want to watch me seeing and writing on a real life M7, you now can. I think. I'm actually uploading the video as of when I'm recording this video. So maybe I'm a massive liar. But we'll see. Yeah, so it looks like you have a uh, big jet and a small prop plane, which is pretty neat. Oh, do the planes just disappear? Oh no, they go to the... Um, they go over here to the uh, terminal, which is pretty neat. Okay, why can I not go? Is it? Um, the doors don't want to seem to open or. Okay. Well, I was about to mark some positive points for the doors being animated, but I guess they're broken. Hang on a minute. Nope. The doors are broken. As I'm hearing of the plane. Yep, okay, I guess the doors of this thing are broken, so... Uh, I guess we'll be going to the next station with open doors. Oh, by the way, I guess this is a... Oh, wait, there's the timetable. Wait a minute! It gives you an arrival departure time, but the clock is broken. Oh, the door's just closed. There we go. Okay, well, we're off. All right, back to the other end of the line. <laughs> this video is... Okay, but this video's been a bit of a mess, but... Uh... Oh, I hope you enjoyed it anyway. The M7. Yes! But yeah, so quick that the M7 is here in Trace Mitchell. Not that it really matters at this point, though, because, you know... Now that Train Simulator 3 is a thing, I don't really uh, plan to do anything big here in Train Simulator 2. Um, but you know what? Why not put this train over in Trains 3 then? That'd be cool. But uh, anyway, yeah, M7 now in Trains 3. I mean, tra Trains 2. Yes. Oh yeah, the sounds are completely off from the thing. The M7 sounds nothing like this in real life. Don't even get that iconic, like, startup sound. Well, okay, you do kind of get it, but because of the way that the game is programmed, you don't hear it very well. Yeah. I think if you want a proper M7 experience, you gotta turn to a more realistic sim, like... Yes, I'm going to mention Train Sim World again, but to be fair, the Harlem line in that route is, or in that game is pretty good. Uh, you can also drive this thing in the Long Island Railroad um, formation on the Long Island Railroad route. And even over in Train Sim Classic, you can drive this thing on the, uh, the Hudson line, and you can improve the sounds there by getting the uh, Fame Realist Sound Pack. And you can also drive this thing in the Long Island Railroad form over in Trains or Train Sim Classic as well. So, yeah. I think if you want, like, a realistic M7 experience, uh, I mean, it, this train's version does look good. It just doesn't really drive that good. So, yeah. Oh, well. But if you're just a diehard M7 fan, though, and you just want an M7 to drive here in Train Smart 2, I guess this isn't so bad. Um, sounds are rubbish. Uh, physics are 
Well, okay, to be fair, this is an easy mode, but yeah. But it looks good. And they get a ding dong every time the uh, doors open, which is also pretty neat. So I guess not all bad. And this, uh, the station mall is pretty decent as well. I'm not sure what station this is supposed to be in real life. I do know that this is like nicked from one of the station models in the, uh, the Harlem Line route. I'm just not sure which one. So, um, for anyone that's knowledgeable, please do tell. Hey, look, it's a freight train. Oh, I haven't seen one of those yet today. It's held by a Canadian national locomotive. Oh, yeah, there's the, um, yeah, hauling a train of, uh, of those gondola container cars. It's pretty neat. Look at that. Just to get some AI stock here in this scenario. Uh. Alrighty then, well, we're already almost at the other end. Yep, that's the whole thing. Well, okay, there are some bits of the route that we won't see today, such as the industrial section. Um. I mean, if you guys really want it, let me know. I might do a second video on this route where I play one of the industrial scenarios. Uh, but for today, we'll just uh, do this. Oh! Yeah, this train... Oh, we have a red light coming up? Huh, also, he's lost some points. Good job, me. Wait, I'm still... I'm apparently I'm losing points now. Oh. Oh, it's probably a red light coming up. Where is it? Wait, is that supposed to be it? Oh. Good thing I caught that. Wow. Almost ran the red light. Failed the whole scenario. <laughs> okay. What's the red for, then? There's some wagons and... Is it this guy? Oh. So, uh... Hmm. Okay. We're out of red. The invisible red, which is interesting. For how long, though? Also, look how we don't get a uh, thing in the cab. The light side view works. Well, um... Okay, why can't we pull in here? What's this? Why is the light red? Doesn't even tell us. Oh, hang on. Is it because it's the points are changed wrong? That's a manual junction. Oh. Oh, there we go then. Okay, I guess we're losing points. I don't care. Yeah, welcome to the episode where Fluent Development is losing points, but he doesn't care. Oh, there we go then. Oops. Yeah, why am I losing points, though? Is it because I'm ahead of schedule or something? I mean, not that I care, but... Why? Oh, here we are, then! Already back at the other end of the line. Pretty quick run. But, then again, the runs up isn't that big. It's pretty refreshing to drive a train with instant brakes and stuff. Well, there we have it. That is the Springfield Industrial Route. Overall, meh. I mean, if you guys want, it's only four dollars. Okay, I say only four dollars. It could be cheaper than that, but yeah, if you're okay with paying the four dollars, then yeah. So I don't know. You guys may have to give me some uh, some of your own opinions on this route if you like it or not. Personally, I mean, I like some of the assets here in this route, but uh, as far as the route itself, it just needs to be bigger. And maybe include some rolling stock that actually may make sense for the Northeast, I guess. But, um, yeah, but that will do it for this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like, 
comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in whatever I make next.